the interior of some church with lots of chairs. A teenage girl with dark hair and glasses wearing a pale green dress. White ballerinas on bare feet. In the material below. Most of the time both feet do not have any contact with the footwear, or they rest on it while crushing it. In the air hangs first the right leg folded over the left and then the left leg folded over the right. Space concrete, produced on the basis of potatoes. British scientists have used a Martian regolith simulator. Potato starch and a pinch of salt to create a material that is twice as strong as concrete. The authors of the material claim that the space concrete could be used to build houses and infrastructure on the Moon or Mars in future manned missions. So far, of course, it is not even a matter of the next few years, but if the idea of a Martian or lunar settlement is in the realm of plans, we will have to think about what the buildings would be made of. It turns out that the ingredients for the material that can be successfully used are often eaten by us. Scientists at the University of Manchester have developed a material called Starcrete, from star concrete, which can be translated as star concrete, or space concrete, which could one day be used to build settlements in other parts of the solar system. By combining potato starch with a material imitating Martian or lunar regolith, they created something much stronger than ordinary concrete. Constructing a sufficient number of buildings for the Martian colonizers will certainly require a significant amount of building materials, which are difficult to transport from Earth in such quantity. So you have to think about something that could be produced locally. What is a lot on Mars? For example, the regolith, i.e. The local weathered rock, which now has the form of dust. Only now how to make a material in the style of e.g. concrete. It turns out that it is possible. Although the first method developed by researchers from the University of Manchester can be said to require quite a lot of sacrifice from astronauts. Using Martian dust. You can create a strong material by adding human blood and urine to it as well. The former, for obvious reasons, would be out of the question, and as for the latter, no one would feel comfortable living in a building constructed in this way. So the researchers looked for a different solution. The assumptions were that the production of the material would be quite simple, because transporting specialized equipment from Earth could prove extremely problematic. It turned out that the building material can be made from what we see on our plates. Since it will become necessary to produce food for the astronauts anyway. The researchers concluded that potato starch could also be used as a component of space concrete. In addition, such a building material could be strengthened by adding magnesium chloride, which is present, for example, in human tears. And astronauts will not have to be forced to shed tears, and it is not about longing for the Earth. Because magnesium chloride is plentiful on the surface of Mars, the scientists named their material Starcrete, a pun on the word, concrete, meaning concrete. So far, a number of trials have been carried out using starch and simulated Martian or lunar dust to produce this material. Let's add that the production process would be quite ecological. Because while on Earth the production of concrete is responsible for about 8%, carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere, because it is necessary to obtain high temperatures here. Starcrete can even be produced in a microwave oven. The results of the endurance tests carried out turned out to be surprising. It was found that starcrete made of Martian dust could be twice as strong as terrestrial concrete and withstand a pressure of 72 megapascals, megapascals. The lunar star Crete, on the other hand, would be even tougher, 
as it could handle up to 91 megapascals of pressure. How efficient would Star Crete be though? Well, it is estimated that 213 bricks could be obtained from 25 kilograms of dehydrated starch. However, to build, for example, a house with three bedrooms, this number should be multiplied by 35. Currently, research is being conducted not only on improving Star Crete, but even on its potential use on Earth. The Sex Life of Giraffes Scientists have discovered an unusual ritual. Giraffes do not have a fixed breeding season. They do not go into estrus like dogs or cats. They do not perform mating calls or provide visual cues to indicate readiness for intercourse. So how can a male giraffe know that his advances will be accepted? In short, through urine, pheromones and gentle nudges. A study by the University of California, Davis provides new insights into giraffes' unique sex lives, their reproductive behavior, and how their anatomy supports this behavior. The details are described in the scientific journal, Animals. So how do giraffes initiate rapprochement? First, males provoke females to urinate by poking them and sniffing their genitals. If the female is receptive to his advances, she will urinate for about 5 seconds while the male takes it in her mouth. Then he tucks his lip, inhales it, thus transporting the female's pheromones to the vomeronasal organ. The phenomenon of inhaling female urine is called the Flemen reflex. The researcher's study provides the most thorough understanding yet of how this ritual affects the anatomy of giraffes. Although it is common among many animals, including horses and cats, most mammals wait until urine is on the ground. Giraffes are not capable of this, so they test the sample while urinating. This is unusual behavior in the animal world. Males do not risk bending to the ground due to the extreme development of their head and neck. They have to poke the female, telling him, please urinate now. And that's often what happens. The male must persuade the female to cooperate. If she refuses, the male will know that there is no future for him, says Professor Lynette Hart of the University of California, lead author of the study. Hart and her husband, Benjamin, a professor emeritus at the same university, have repeatedly witnessed the ritual of giraffes during research trips to Etosha National Park in Namibia. On its western side there were large waterholes where dozens of giraffes gathered. Professor Lynette called it, a dream come true, to watch giraffes. Scientists also noted the previously undocumented behavior of giraffes, including bone chewing, osteophagy, processions lasting several days to the body of an individual killed by lions, as well as loud growls of males. It was most likely a warning cry, as it scared away most of the surrounding giraffes. They are usually very quiet and were once thought to be mute.